Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Jamie Bird, and I'm a member here at United. At, uh, what is this? Community United Methodist. I guess we've been attending here for about five years. Barb, is that right? Yeah. I'm having another, yet another senior moment. It seemed to be happening more and more, uh, which goes hand in hand with uh, with my sermon this morning and our, my message. As as you guys know, Sally is on vacation, and and uh, I have been blessed to deliver the message this morning and it's a blessing for me because you know all of us are going through things and when Sally asks me to deliver a message what I do is I take what's going on in my life and I, I, I really focus and study and I've been studying this for weeks and, and uh, now I'm going to share with you what God has been teaching me um, why don't we start with a prayer why don't, won't you bow with me please Holy God, we come before you as your humble servants. We ask that as we gather here today to hear your holy word, that you are here with us. Help us to hear your voice and to grow ever closer to you, to become the people you have called us to be. We make our prayer through the, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all who agreed said together, Amen. Okay, we have two scriptures this morning. Our first scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Our second scripture reading is Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of my message today is Blessed to be Broken. As I was going, preparing for this message today and reading the scripture we just read about uh, the, the disciples' uh, difficult boat ride, I was reminded of a song. Let's see if you guys know it. Now sit right back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of a faithful ship. Do we know this song? Isn't it amazing that I can remember that song, yet right here in front of you just a couple of weeks ago, I could not remember the words of the solo that I've been practicing and saying a thousand times. Isn't that the way it goes? I got married late in life. I was 43 years old when I got married. But marrying Barb is one of the best things that I've ever done. She's a great blessing to my life. She does all the grocery shopping in our family. And, and you guys may know that a lot of the soap companies have been coming out with these liquid soaps that just smell terrific. They make you smell really good and make you feel good because you smell good and not long ago, Barb brought me home a new soap. And I saw it there in the shower, and I still had the old soap. So I thought, oh, I'm not out yet. Why, why is Barb bringing me this new soap? And I smelled it. And boy, it smelled good. And then I looked at the label on the front where it said in big, bold letters, Odor Guard. And I thought, am I missing something here? As it turns out, she just liked the way it smelled. 
So it's a good thing I didn't lean on my own understanding in that case. In his book, The Road Less Traveled, Scott Peck starts the book with these words. Life is difficult. Period. End of paragraph. You know, 2,000 years before Scott Peck wrote this book, Jesus Christ said, in your life you will have troubles. We all have been through difficult times. We all have difficult times in our future. Some people experience financial difficulties. We have health difficulties. Sometimes we have relational difficulties. Sometimes we just have difficulty dealing with every day. But as Jesus said, in your life you will have trouble. So how do we face these difficult times? In our scripture today, the disciples are starting off on what was probably a perfectly normal day. They get in the boat, or they're in the boat, and they start to cross over to the other side. You know, Jesus has said many times, let's cross over to the other side. And the disciples get in the boat and they go to the other side. But today, this time, is different. Today, a storm comes up. The seas get rough. The waves are crashing over the boat and it's starting to get swamped. Things are not looking too good and the disciples, just like the rest of us, start to panic. We start to say, get, become afraid and say, my God, what's going on? Yet the whole time, Jesus is right there in the stern of the boat. The whole time. And so they wake Jesus and he stops, he says, quiet, be still, and everything stops. And what does he say to his disciples who have known him for two or three years by this point, who have seen him heal the sick, who have seen them ha take a leper and, and cleanse him completely, who have seen him raise Lazarus from the dead? What does he say to his disciples? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Do you ever think Jesus asks us, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I'm sure he's thought this about me. In the book of Exodus, God says to Moses, say therefore to the people of Israel, but the people of Israel's hearts we're hardened. In times of trouble, we have to be careful that our hearts do not become hardened. One way we can do this is to remind ourselves of God's promises. Our Bible is full of God's promises. Too many to read before you today. But here's a couple. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Be content with what you have, for He has said... I will never leave you nor forsake you. Romans 8.28 All things work together for good for those who are called by God. So another way we can keep our hearts from becoming hardened when we find ourselves in trouble is to stop, to think, to remember the promises of God and to pray. When we pray, we can ask for God's help. In the Psalms, David frequently says, I cried to the Lord for help. On another boat ride, another bumpy boat ride, when Peter stepped out of the boat, he cried one of the shortest prayers ever. Lord, save me! And Jesus was there to take him by the hand. So after we pray, we need to wait for His answer. Psalm 37 says, My soul waits for God. And even so, we need to know that this is God's will. It's God who's in charge. You know, we may, there may be some things that God won't change for us. There may be things that that He has exactly the way He wants them for us. 
The Apostle Paul, we read in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, had a thorn in his flesh that dogged him until the day he died. And that was to keep him humble. This was God's choice. In Joshua 7, we read, And Joshua fell on his face and cried to the Lord, and the Lord said, Get up! Because there was sin in the camp of Israel. So, if you're sinning, you have to first repent. The Scripture says, submit to God. We submit to God by saying, Lord, show me what you want me to do. I'll do anything you command. So why does God allow us to go through these troubles? Well, you might remember in the book of Job, God allowed the devil to do anything he wanted to Job, anything except kill him. Job lost everything, everything he had. And if you read the story, Job gets redeemed after he prays for his friends, which is an interesting thing. Our Lord Jesus Christ also went through difficult times. I can't imagine all the pain and suffering he, he took. He was falsely accused, beaten, imprisoned, and ultimately crucified. Yet our God who is all-powerful, our God for whom nothing is impossible, our God allowed His only begotten Son to go through this. So why? Why would He allow these things to happen? Why do we go through tough times? The answer is the same for all of us. The same for Christ. It is for God's glory and it's to teach us to love God and to trust Him above all else. You see, God loves us too much to leave us where we are. Let me give you an example of what our lives are like. We have any bowlers in here today? Anybody who likes to bowl? Have you ever been to the bowling alley and you see the kids bowling? What do they do when the kids bowl? They pull out these bumpers, right? We pull out the bumpers with my wife sometimes when we go bowling. Actually, she, she beats me most of the time. She's really good. But the bumpers are there to keep the ball moving towards the pins. And that's what trouble in our life is like. The trouble is to keep us moving towards God. To me, keep us moving closer to Him. To help us learn to trust Him. To help us learn that it doesn't matter what we're going through, God is there. Just like for the disciples, Jesus was on the cushion in the back of the boat. God is there for us. It is in that time of trouble that we really find His presence. So how do we react to these troubles? Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So we must seek to know our living God. This means that we pray. This means that we read His Word in the Bible. Remember the Scripture from Proverbs says, when we face troubles, we do not lean on our own understanding, but instead, instead we trust God. And we do this because it develops our faith muscles. Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? It's easy to trust God when things are going well. And it's not so easy to trust God when you're in trouble, when you're in the midst of the storm, when you're in the valley. So let's look at the valley for a minute. What's the valley really like? Well, first of all, it's fertile in the valley. Psalm 23, which we all just 
recited a few moments ago, says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. That's right, God is with us in the valley. Valleys are times of discipline, times when the Lord is teaching us. Valleys are not sent to defeat you, but instead they're sent to increase you. Valleys are not endings, but they're new beginnings. Hebrews 12, 11 says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Sometimes God leads us into the valley. Sometimes we make a mistake and put ourselves there. Sometimes it's nobody's fault. But see, every time, God knows you're there, and it's His will. He has allowed it to happen. So what happens when we go through these valleys? Jesus told us the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. The evil one pounces on us. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. To devour. See, the first thing he tries to steal is your faith. The first thing he does is he starts telling you lies. He starts trying to make your problems huge and unbearable. He wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be angry and upset. But James 4, 7 says, So be subject to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This is why we lean not on our own understanding. Instead, we set our eyes on God. And trusting God is a moment-by-moment choice. Obtaining His peace is a moment-by-moment choice. It's easy to be consumed by the events of each day. It's easy to let our emotions get away with us. But when we trust God, we learn to be dependent on Him. And this leads to abundant life. You see, when we're in that moment, God is there with us. Just like Jesus was in the back of the boat when the disciples were facing those crashing waves. God is right there with us. If we look to God, our spirit is lifted. If we, look to, if we look long at our circumstances, we start to believe the lies. By looking up to God, we're empowered, and God equips us to deal with the situation. Our hope is restored. You might know the verse from Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19 says, We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. I bet those disciples would like to have that anchor. So when we, faith, when we seek God and submit to God, we begin to see things from His perspective instead of our own. We can avoid being afraid because we know God's in control. And in this way, we transcend our problems. And we can overcome them. Our faith grows and God brings us through the valley. You know, we're taught Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And if we keep our eyes on Jesus and know His power, He will give us His peace and His his hope. In fact, I mentioned earlier that Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He continues to say, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. In John 14, 1, Jesus says, Do not let your heart be troubled. And in verse 27, He says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. He says in John 10.10, I came that you might have life 
and have it to the full. He gives strength to the weary and He increases the power of the weak. That's from the book of Isaiah. His life is full of examples. That was part of the reason He came, to show us how to live. When He, saw, when he fought the devil in the, in the wilderness, He used Scripture to overcome the evil one. When He was facing the worst trial of His life, He knew He was going to be crucified. And He said, not my will, but Your will, God, be done. And those are good examples for us. You see, God allows us to go into the valley to bless us and for His glory. We may not see or understand the blessing. It may not even be the blessing that we want. But you can believe in God's goodness and that whatever we're going through is going to make us better. So, what do we do when we face difficulty? How do we strengthen our faith? Well, first remember this. God was with Abraham. God was with Moses. God was with Daniel. He was with David. He was with Gideon. He was with, jo- with Joseph. He was with Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And guess what? God's with you. He sends us His Holy Spirit to help us. Jesus said, If you love Me, keep My commands, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. You see, when the devil is throwing his lies at you, if you seek God, if you seek the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, He will lead you in the right direction. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, you don't have to be perfect in all of this. God wants us to love Him with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls. And if we're doing our best to do that, that's what's required. You know, would you believe we should really seek God's discipline? That's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Who likes, you know, discipline... The Bible tells us discipline seems harsh when you're going through it, but we're made better by it. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Paul said, Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. So we need to keep joy in our hearts. I want to close with this. Romans 8 has a lot of really good scriptures to help you get through the tough times. Romans 8, verse 6. Well, let's go to verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Verse 28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to His purposes. And finally, in 37 and 39... But in all these things we are overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, if those scriptures don't stir your spirit, here's one that you should probably read every day. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. Acknowledge Him. And He will make your paths straight. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.